Now, recently, Minister of Justice and Correctional Services, Ronald Lamula, announced that the department is reopening the inquest into the circumstances surrounding the deaths of anti-apartheid activists uh, Matthew Koniwe, Sperom Konto, Fort Galata, and Stelom Sauli, who are known as the Craddock Four. Now, the anti-apartheid activists were allegedly killed by the apartheid security police in 1985. Previously, both the De Beer inquest in 1987 and the Zitzman inquest in 1993 failed to identify their murderers. And this also follows the National Prosecuting Authority setting up a specialist unit that is tasked to investigate and prosecute apartheid-era crimes. So to discuss this matter further, we are joined virtually now by Advocate Dumisa Nsebeza, who is a former Truth and Reconciliation Commissioner, as well as current judge of the African Court on human and people's rights. Uh, Advocate Nsebeza, good to see you. Good morning. Welcome to Morning Live. Yeah, good morning to you and good morning to the viewers. Uh, I'm pleased to be here. Advocate Nsebeza, um, you know, it, just to get straight into the matter here, this is something that we've been talking about for a very long time as a nation. This is something that the victims and the victims' families have also been talking about and trying to get some movement on for a very long time. Uh, since the conclusion of the work of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, there were some 300 files that were handed over to the National Prosecuting Authority. And what has been most glaringly obvious was the rate of prosecution or uh, the no of snail's pace. I want to say snail's pace, but at least lately there is something going on. And talk to us about someone who was there during the TRC as a commissioner and the work that was done there and what has been done subsequently. Well, to start with, in 1998, when we submitted our report to President Mandela, uh, there were recommendations that we made. And those recommendations were that, you know, um, some of the cases that were used for investigation by us in the investigative unit mm -hmm. or by the TRP had not been completed. And we gave an indication of what those cases were. And we know that the Amnesty Committee was one of the committees, was the only committee that carried work further than 1998, when the Monday period of the TRC came to an end. And the Amnesty Committee then began to hear cases of people who wanted to be granted amnesty. You will know that the legislation was saying if you want to be granted amnesty, you must come forward and make a full disclosure. But if you don't make a dis full disclosure and you are denied amnesty, or you don't come forward as you ought to have done, uh, then you will be prosecuted. Um, so mm -hmm. uh, the application by these five gentlemen, or six gentlemen, you know, Sneeman, Ayla, Lords, to Plessy. Uh, they were denied amnesty in 1999. That's almost 24, 25 years ago. And you would have expected that with that denial of amnesty, the next thing would follow. And the next thing would be prosecution. But that has not happened. So I am not one of those people who receives the news of uh, new evidence having emerged. The evidence has always been there. And uh, one wonders whether the uh, government is going to be as true to its commitment by uh, Minister Lamola as it ought to have been uh, all those 25 years ago. These people were denied amnesty in 1999, and in terms of the act, they ought to have been prosecuted immediately thereafter. I can give you some reasons as to why um, the, the prosecution did not take place.
Uh, please, let's delve into that because last year, for example, you had the NPA saying that they have now enhanced efforts. They've set up a new unit uh, which they've capacitated and therefore they were signaling their commitment uh, to prosecuting these apartheid era crimes. Uh, We've told that uh, in their 2022-23 annual report, um, they had indicated that there were 135 of those cases under investigation, of which we are told 10 have been finalised. That has uh, been of uh, as of September 2021. Um, so you still have 10 pending judgments as well. Again, progress, but you're going to give us those reasons as to why you think this is perhaps not going anywhere fast? Well, there have been several reasons that have been given. In fact, the NPA, the operatives in the NPA uh, themselves have said that there was political interference with their, uh, with their work. Uh, Advocate Ackerman, Advocate Fusipi called himself and you will know that even in the Zondo Commission, when uh, Advocate Piccoli had an opportunity to make presentations at that, com at that commission, he made it very clear that there was political interference, you know, with their work. I remember that Advocate Ackerman also indicated that there was a time when they were busy with these TRC-related cases. And then there was, you know, intervention by uh, Minister Mabanda, who was Minister of Justice at the time, I think. And, uh, you know, and so, uh, and, and Fusi Piccoli also con confirmed that um, Minister Mabanda, uh, you know, um, said that they should stay away from these TRC-related cases. Now, you have to say, or to have to ask yourself, whether... Even as a minister, she had the power or even, you know, the authority to say some cases must not be investigated. And then you ask the further question, could she have done this after or in consultation with the president of the country, where the time was President Mbeki? And therefore, if this is so, and that is what... I can indicate, I said in my opinion when I was asked whether measures taken by the NPA were measures that were adequate to deal with TRC-related cases. Then I said in my recommendations that I think this is one matter that needs a commission of inquiry. I know that South Africans are fatigued with commissions of inquiry, but I think the fairest way for us to bring this matter to some measure of conclusion would be for a commission of inquiry which would have the powers of search and seizure, which would have the power of subpoenaing witnesses. And then they would deal, even if it is only to deal with the question of was there or was there no political interference? And if there was political interference, in whose interest was it? Because we were dealing here with crimes that were committed before 1994, before we became a, you know, a democracy. And, uh, and, and I think the South African public much, and, 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 the, and, the, and the families of the people who were involved in, uh, in disappearances, in killings, and in abductions, and in torture, and all that, you know, those families are entitled to know what the truth is. And if it means there must be another commission of inquiry just to focus on whether or not there was political interference, then it would be worth doing. So, you know, you speak of the families uh, of Advocate in Sebeza. So we know with the Craddock Four, there were two inquests that were held into the deaths of the Craddock Four, the one in 1987 and then again in 1993. Uh, but, yeah. you know, when you talk about uh, the perception um, and also having spoken to some of the families and uh, members of these families, uh, there is of course, given now um, with uh, the latest decision on the Craddock 4, um, people asking, and, and I've had people ask me that directly, do you think this is as a result of these families being more vocal 
at this time that this particular inquest is now being reopened? Or um, do you believe that this is as a result of the NPA turning over a new leaf and actually being serious about getting to the bottom of this? Well, the NPA was my client in the recent opinion that I gave as to where the measures that are being taken relevant to the TRC cases were adequate measures, and if they were inadequate, I was supposed to give suggestions as to what ought to be done. So in that way, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't really want to uh, appear to be speaking against a person who, or against an entity that had given me instructions. But that having been said, the fact of the matter is that, you know, uh, there are people out there, you know, Lucano, Lucalatas, even the Gonuez, and, and, you know, uh, people related to the credit for, there is a need for them to find closure. And uh, I remember that Lucano even went to, so far as to say, it will be a consolation prize for them because even some of the perpetrators, in fact, I think the last perpetrator died uh, a few years ago or, mm. or, or had died just recently. So that the question of prosecution would be out of question if the only culprits who ought to have been prosecuted in terms of the act, you know, because they never applied for, when they applied for amnesty, they were denied amnesty. Then, you know, he, um, the only benefit of an inquiry of the nature that I suggested and recommended would be for people to finally get closure, for the truth to come out. Because that was the whole aim, amongst other things, of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. There was an expectation that if people came forward and divulged the truth of all those atrocities that were committed during the mandate period, then the nation would be able to reconcile because everything would have been laid bare. So for as long as there are, you know, um, cases like the Cred of Four, where the families feel that not enough has been done, uh, then there is going to continue to be some dissatisfaction. They can, there's nothing they can do about prosecuting criminally those who ought to have been prosecuted if all of them have died. Mm. But uh, it clearly, you know, gain for them if at least now the, this process which uh, uh, Minister Lamula has announced is going to uh, lay bare all the truths and those truths will be of a nature that will give closure uh, or an opportunity for the, uh, for the parties to have closure. Uh, Pity we are out of time, Advocate Nsebeza, so we have to leave it there. But I think that is a very interesting point, along with what uh, Lucanio Talata says about consolation prizes. And I suppose the fact that most of these perpetrators um, have now died is a concern. And perhaps that's why, as you say, there needs to be a look into whether there has been political interference in this process in order to perhaps get to a point where nobody ultimately is being held accountable. Uh, but uh, Advocate Nsebeza, we're going to leave it there for now. Thanks so much for your time. Advocate Dumisa Nsebeza is a former Truth and Reconciliation Commissioner and current judge of the African Court on Human and People's Rights, talking to us about the Craddock 4 inquest being reopened and the need to speed up apartheid-related crime investigations and prosecutions.